Uh, now, Simon Reeve has spent the last 20 years exploring the world with his many travel shows and he's now heading out across the UK to share stories from behind the scenes. Good morning. Good morning to you. So you've got to reveal the bits that we didn't see on camera, right? This is the point of the tour. That is tour. a big part of it, a part of the tour. Yeah. Yes, that makes it sound so grand, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I love it, it. I love grand. it. <laughs> you've done it before, though, haven't you, where you've sat with an audience and... I've, I've sat and stood in front of an audience, a theatre audience around the country, and it was a... I think it's fair to say, a surprising success. And uh, I absolutely loved it, and we extended it a few times. And goodness, I really enjoyed it. There's just something... There's something about doing things live, yep. as you know. Yeah. Gets the old ticker going a little bit more. But actually seeing people as well... Telly's great, of course it is, but in a theatre, you get to see people, you get yep. to interact with them. So I absolutely loved that. I can't imagine anything really gets your ticker going. I can't imagine you breaking out in the sweat over anything. The kind of... Pickles you've got yourself into. I love that word, pickles. Pickles, I mean, it's a very gentle word for the kind of things you... Just, I've got a little list here. You've dodged bullets on the front line. Yes. Uh, you've been detained for spying by the KGB. I think a few people have, yes, yes. It doesn't it's end true. well, usually. It, do, it ends very well. Here I am. And Tell as us you what say, happened. I hadn't really counted up how long I've been doing it, but, yeah, 20 years 20 nearly. 20 years. Goodness. Tell us about the Russia KGB thing. Yeah, that was unfortunate. We were creeping <laughs> through some bushes trying to film a secret Russian military base right. in an unrecognised country called Transnistria between Moldova and Ukraine, as you do. And I was just saying to the camera, they'll never see us from over here. But they did, and some guys turned up in trench coats looking like comedy KGB people, and they were. They still had the KGB well, there, the old comedy. Russian secret police. Well, I it was quite they didn't funny, any ultimately. Jokes, did they? they didn't, they didn't, no. And I did start scratching the cell wall, trying to see if I could mark the dates. But eventually we got released because somebody said I was related to the Queen of England. It's a longer story, but it was very funny. Come to, to the be... tour, you'll hear the come whole along, story. Come along, come <laughs> along. It was a relief to be released. Of course it was. I mean, to, when, when you started out, can you remember the very first time that you did something on camera in a foreign country and how... You must have been a pinch-me moment. It was a pinch-me moment, but it was also... I never imagined it would be... Uh, you know, I'd get another gig, basically. I what thought I'd give it a try. Thing and I remember the first thing I did was walking into a plague research centre in Kazakhstan, where they had vials of anthrax stored in a fridge and they all rattled and nearly fell out and I nearly tried to touch them. But it was a whole experience. It was... It was we were travelling through Central Asia. It was a series called Meet the Stans, the Stan countries, Kazakhstan, yeah. Kyrgyzstan, etc. And it was just brilliant from the off. It was just such an adventure, a genuine adventure. And Will, who had the camera then, he just said, go on then. And I did. I just went and talked and experienced it and met people. And that was what was brilliant about the journeys from the very beginning. It wasn't just about me and my blisters. It was about the people I was meeting. And when you're doing that, you've got a limitless supply of stories, haven't you? Eight billion human beings. Yes. And they're all amazing. But your <laughs> own story is amazing. Well... Isn't it? Because you say that often people mistake you for being a sort of posh, wealthy boy who mm. managed to fall into a lovely life of TV and travel. That's not quite true, is That's it? Not... It's, a, it's a very different route. Just it's give not us a quite little... true. No, it's nice, I think, now, when, when people reveal, as it were, that they don't have that... They don't come from that traditional TV mould, as it were. Yeah, um, or privilege in, in yeah, that sense. Of, yeah, of privilege. Tell us a bit no, about... No, so I, I, grew up fairly, I grew up very near here, actually. I used to cause trouble in the streets around the studio where we are. And, and when you say cause trouble, you actually mean cause trouble. Yeah, I mean, I was a naughty boy. I wasn't hurting anybody, um, but I was, I was definitely quite... I was quite a naughty lad, and uh, I got into a bit of trouble, and I got very depressed in my teens, and I, I sank very low. I had a lot of... Not more than teenage angst, basically. I was lost, I was hopeless, I was helpless. I flunked out of school with absolutely no qualifications. I went on the dole. And I sank really, really low, in truth. And close I can to the still... edge, actually. Sorry? Close to the edge. Very close, yeah. literally, to an edge, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was very close to, to, to ending it, to, in, in truth. And that's still within me. I, it's not a different person. I still feel that and reflect on it. And I talked about it, and I talk about it fairly openly now as I will on, on my little tour, because I think it's important that people remember that even if you look as though you're swanning along very happily on telly, you know, but still there's uncertainty, there's there's not necessarily fear, but there's trepidation and there's, there's a, there's there's a sense of imposter that, that... and a few demons yes. still, definitely, yeah. absolutely. And it's interesting because you have a son. 
I do. Um, how old is he now? Jake is 12. He's, Hello, Jake. Jake is 12. Yes. And, you, and this is, I mean, you know, you take him to unusual places, don't you? Was... We've done a few, yeah. He's, I don't want to drag him into my, come on, son, we're going to go to the Congo. Yeah, he's but like, can we just go like to Devon? To. Yeah, he'd, <laughs> no. he'd be quite Although happy you've done a whole go. thing on Cornwall recently, I know. But He's yeah. happy with Devon, where, yeah. we, where we live. Yeah, he, he's happy with a I think one of these pictures was Romania, yeah. wasn't it? Which isn't the usual we holiday. We went on train to Romania as well, which is definitely different. In a, you know, sleeping on the train in little cabins and being joined by Helmut and his trombone wow. in the middle of the night. But it was amazing and it was an experience. And to us, that was a bit of the, to the ends of the earth, if wow. you like. It doesn't have to be around the planet. It can be a bit more close. Well, you are brilliant, a brilliant orator. And I think people can have such a treat when they come and see you in the theatres. Thank you. Um, Simon's tour to the ends of the earth starts in Exeter on the 4th of October. Thanks so much. Thank Great you. Great to see you.